What is going on? We had a uh, little technical difficulties. You'll notice that my face is a little bit red because we're live on personal Facebook on the left side. And then obviously you guys have the, the higher quality, all the resolution when it comes down to audio. We're gonna be talking about the ideal client. This is something that I remember when I was starting out. First of all, let me just introduce the show, which is BPIU. So BPIU is obviously for, not obvious, but it's for agents. And it's essentially the, the stuff that I never actually got when I was an agent. You know, I started out at a small firm, it was training wasn't ideal, and then it was kind of just thrown in there. Is there any other way you kind of wanted to, to, to learn? Maybe not at that time, because I needed money, I needed to know what to do, and I, I was all over the place. You know, I had no idea how to get the clients, I had no idea who to call, I had no idea about follow-up, I had no idea about the transaction, the sales process, nothing. I kind of was just, pushed out there, uh, lost a couple of clients, lost a couple of deals, and then finally I started getting my footing and I started just saying, okay, we need to get this handled and essentially we did. Obviously, Halstead Property, Corcoran, Brown Harris Stevens, you know, all the, the large shops, they have training, they have ongoing sh um, shops, tra ongoing shops taught by managers and agents and things like that. And then you have Real Estate Board of New York, which is our trade group. But there's really no one out there. There's a couple of national people, national agents that are actually, you know, putting out content and willing to disclose their systems and how they do things. There's not many people in New York City that say, I prospect from nine to 10, I then follow up from 10 to 11, I take a 15, 20 minute lunch, I come back, I start doing appointments, and you know, that, that's really not anywhere that I found, you know, in New York City, there's a couple of elsewhere. But one of the most interesting things that I remember hearing someone say was, who's your ideal client? And I was like, anyone that's looking to buy or sell. Then I started noticing that not all people, clients are as fun to work with. And not all of them are motivated, not all of them are qualified, not all of them actually wanna buy or sell. So then you start qualifying them and you say, what are your reasons for buying? What are your reasons for selling? Because if you start taking someone around for a while and they don't end up buying, that time could be used on someone else. That sounds very basic, but if you think about it, what business are you really in? You know, what, what are you just, are you there to open doors? You know, Tony Robbins has talked about that. A couple other coaches have talked about it. You're not, your value does not come from opening doors. Your value does not come by saying, here's what's available. That's all online. That's all online. And to be honest, I'm glad because instead of visiting 65 homes or 40 homes, you can see that all online and then make a decision. Okay, these are the 10 open houses I wanna to go to. These are the five that I actually wanna take private tours on. And then by the time, you, you've literally shrunk the buying process from maybe months to a month. And if you really hit the pavement hard, you could get it done in like maybe two weeks, two and a half weeks. I've had clients that said, right after the first open house, and then I've had clients that have taken a lot longer to buy a place, but they ended up buying. So qualifying is huge. On top of the qualifying, which is, can you afford it? Do you actually wanna sell at a realistic price? Do you wanna put an offer at a realistic price? That's different. But when you look at the client that you actually like working with, I've noticed that I wanna work with someone that's fun, that's engaging, they probably have their own business or in an entrepreneurial role. They probably are you know, very active, you know, whether that's going to the gym or biking or running or something like that. I have, uh, I've heard people, when I was at Hall said, someone said, I love working with attorneys. You know, someone said, I, I love working with doctors because that was the field that I was in. You know, it's, it really depends on you, but you actually, you'll start to notice that you'll, you'll want to work with certain people at certain times, and that time comes when you're in the industry for a long time and you say, I kinda don't wanna work with this person. You know, there's, there's a lot of people that take the business and they don't care about it, but if you really want happy, if you really don't want a call at midnight, a call at 10 p.m. where they actually respect your hours when you're sleeping or you take maybe Saturday off, it's up to you. And there's a lot of people who are like, well, no, you work seven days a week, 24 seven, whenever Beck and call and anything else, that used to be me. Now I need, and this is the reason, I need that time where I just shut down. Because if you don't have that shutdown, then that restart doesn't happen. And you're always on, and then that's when you either flutter out, you burn out, or you just can't give the, the amount of service because you're always on. You're always on. It's a big difference, all right? So I would, I, I would first 
think all the clients that you've actually serviced before and say, okay, I kind of like working with them. Uh, maybe there's a type of industry, actors, actresses, totally different than bankers. You know, bankers come in, they say, this is the spreadsheet, I'm gonna share it on Google Docs, you leave in your comments in cell five, what you think of each of them, and then we'll see those open houses, and then they'll, they'll categorize it, they'll, they'll start making different tabs, and it's fun, it's engaging. For me, that's, yeah, I'll, I'll take those clients because they're, they're fine and everything else. The biggest uh, issue with, you have to first qualify, the biggest issue is that if you start working with people that it's, it's just not a fun interaction, it's not a fun relationship. So I would, I would say, who do you like working with? Start targeting those people, whether it's athletes, whether it's people that at your gym, you know, whether it's, you know, this, what I'm doing right now is just producing the content so when someone actually sees, they Google my name, they Google BPI, or they have any question that we can answer it here and then we can literally send them that video and be like, we actually, we recorded that video. You know, go into the buy-in process, go into who's your ideal client if you're an agent. So, highly recommend this upfront. Honestly, you're not gonna be able to do it, but start five years in, six years in, seven years in, say, I'm only working with new development. I'm only working with sellers. You yourself, your team could work with whoever you want, but I'm saying you yourself, you need to start specializing because to be honest, the future is really gonna come down to a team that produces the exact same experience for every single client. So in other words, I get a referral from Bob. Bob refers me Jane. Jane says, okay, I'm looking to, and they're usually in the same social circle. So Jane says, I'm looking to buy a place. Bob had a great experience, so much so that he referred you Jane. Okay, you have to give them both the exact same service. In, in teams nationally, and even in New York City that specialize that, specialize in that, are gonna be the winners. You know, because the brokerage is itself, it, each team is essentially gonna have to bring marketing, prospecting, service, and a team leader, okay? And then you just start breaking it down from there. That essentially was a brokerage, because if you look at the history of brokerages, history of brokerages were, just people that essentially provided so much value, we're gonna put this in the New York Times, we're a big brand, we have a storefront, my light just went off in my office, <laughs> and they produced so much value that you just said, I'm not gonna go anywhere else. But since all the value is online, since all the content, all the listings, all the photos, everything has been, as Peter Diamandis said, it's been democratized and, and demonetized, in other words, everything is a lot cheaper. You could do that on your own. That's essentially what we're doing. I overhired in the beginning. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, it, was just, it was just a mess in the beginning. Kind of built out some systems. And now I'm on track to say, okay, this is what we do every single day. This is how we handle customers every single day. We have systems, we have checklists in place. This is a time block from nine to 10, 10 to 11, we go live. And then you just replicate that and it's the exact same process. You know, yes, there's gonna be a variety, obviously in the deals and the transactions and the clients and uh, bringing people together. That's the fun. The fun is not saying, where's my next, where's my next deal coming from? Where's my next client coming from? You know, there, there has to be a, a replicable system of the target audience that you want to hit. That could be condos on the Upper West Side. That could be people that, you know, I don't want to go into fair housing, but it could be people that, you know, you meet at a park. You know, in that park, you know, you have a stroller, or for me, to be honest, it's, it's, it's very, I know immediately if I'm going to get along with the person. You know, almost immediately, we just start bantering, it's fun, it's engaging, it's energetic, smiling, laughing, we're joking around, because if, if you can't do that, when it comes down to the seriousness, it's gonna be tough to trust each other and be transparent, and for me to be able to say, I think it's time to work on the price. I think we need to do something with the staging. I think we need to declutter. I think the buyer is actually not looking to sign a contract. So. Look for your ideal client. I would say it's ideal to do that after a couple of years of actually working with clients. And by the way, this is, this is way more impactful for people that have businesses outside of real estate because you need to know who's walking into your store. You need to know who's buying your, your soap or your, your, your gift basket or your acai bowls. You know, I have two friends that 
uh, started their, their own, uh, it's called Happy Bowls here in New York City, and it's like, who's, who's that ideal person? It's right near NYU, NYU, so it might be students, it might not be students. Well, it's, it's kind of in this, this, this nice area between Greenwich Village and East Village. Is it, we're right near some gyms. It could be people going to the gym, coming back from the gym. Maybe that's my ideal client instead of the locals, all locals, target all the locals. No, target the gyms, target the students. That's what I have to say today about your ideal client. So if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. Signing off from now. Um, I wish this was live streamed, but for whatever reason, you know, we have kind of a, a gangster setup going on right now until my standing desk. We just bought a tripod. We have all this equipment that I'm looking at right now. We're live on my personal Facebook channel, and obviously this is going on to BPI YouTube. Going live again tomorrow. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below.